So in order to understand why the gold rush was a big thing, you got to understand a few other things about it, uh, at least the events leading up to it. So um, you have the Wilmot Proviso. This is from David Wilmot, who's a Democrat from Pennsylvania. He added uh, a, a war added to a war appropriations bill. Um, something that forbade slavery in any territory that had been acquired from Mexico during the Mexican-American War. <clears throat> um, the reason he was he did this is because he was afraid that working-class men um, in the North uh, were his constituents, basically. They uh, feared that they couldn't compete with slave labor had it gone out there. He said that if slavery was not excluded by law, in the pre then the presence of the slave will be exclude the laboring white man. Southerners referred to this as treason to the Constitution. Now, the president at the time was James Polk. He tried reassuring North, uh, moderate Northerners that slavery could never take, route, uh, take root out in the West, in the uh, arid desert of the Southwest. Um, other people said that slavery is adaptable and will actually uh, take root out there, even if he doesn't think it would. Uh, this proviso, and the proviso is basically an amendment to a bill, uh, but it passed the House twice, but it was defeated in the Senate. So it failed, but it still raised this issue of the extension of slavery into the Western territories. Now, you also have this other thing going on, too. You have this thing called the Free Soil Party. They were opposed to the westward expansion of slavery. This is before the Republican Party became a thing. Uh, they wanted free land for Western homesteaders. So their entire thing was free land, free speech, free labor, and free men. They nominated President Martin Van Buren in 1848 and they polled 291,000 votes. They actually split the Democratic vote, and the election went to the Whig Party, to Zachary Taylor. Um, <clears throat> most people didn't think it really mattered, though, at least not the Wilmot Proviso or anything like that, because they thought nobody's really going to go out there. Um, they thought the new areas were a wasteland filled with broken mountains and dreary desert. Then, Polk, who was on his way out, remind, to remind you, uh, made an announcement. He said that gold had been discovered in California, and suddenly the West was important again. So in January of 1848, a guy named James Marshall, he was a carpenter and a handyman, he saw bright bits of yellow minerals near a sawmill that he was working at, and he pulled it out, and he squashed it with a rock to see if it would shatter or squish. That is the test for gold, by the way. And then he turned to the men near him because it squished, and he said, boys, by God, I believe I found a gold mine, and he was not wrong. March 15th, a San Francisco newspaper printed the first account of the gold discovery. Two weeks later, it closed. You want to guess why? Because all the staff had gone. They had gone all off to search for gold. The last edition of the paper said that the whole country from San Francisco to Los Angeles resounds with a sordid cry of gold, 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 while the field is left half-planted, the house half-built, and everything neglected but the manufacture of picks and shovels. In 1849, 80,000 men arrived in California, half by land and half by ship. Half of them were Americans. The other half were made up of Brits, Australians, Germans, French, people from Latin America, and people from China. Soldiers deserted. Sailors jumped ship. Husbands left their wives. Apprentices ran away from their masters. Uh, farmers deserted their farms. Businesses just closed in order to go. They just shut their doors and head on out there. And by July of 1850, oops, sorry. <clears throat> by July of 1850, uh, the population went from 14,000 people to 100,000 people. San Francisco, who the city that in 1847 had all of 459 people in it, within a few months had 200 or sorry, 20,000 people in it. So, massive increase in people, mainly men, very few of them were, men, were women. By 1850, there only 8% of the entire population of California were women. In the mining areas, that was less than 2%. You can go ahead and guess what their jobs were. Uh, they worked, of course, in the red light district, the vast majority of them. Now, California was turned from a sleepy society with little population into a wild, unruly, ethnically diverse, and violent society. They were morally and socially tried as no other American ever has been. San Francisco alone had 500 bars at least, 1,000 gambling dens at least, and in 18 months it burned to the ground six different times. In the early 1850s, you had 1,000 murders in San Francisco. One conviction. That was it. These people who came out here are referred to as the 49ers. 
not just the, the football team. That's where, how the football team gets their name. Uh, as they were going out there, they slaughtered Indians for sport. They drove Mexicans from the mines that were already there. Um, or they just killed them outright and took the mines over. And they also tried to restrict immigration of foreigners, so especially the Chinese, as we all know. That was the first um, group of people who were actually excluded from being able to enter the U.S. Uh, legally were the Chinese. The military government that was up there couldn't keep order. They actually, instead of um, trying to organize things, people just organized themselves and created vigilance communities, which basically that means the, the rule by lynch law uh, and by popular courts. Basically, if you got enough people together to um, convict somebody or got enough people together to lynch somebody and you had uh, very few people opposed, then they could go ahead and lynch somebody. That was the way uh, everything was ruled out in California. So that is how we got California one of the most uh, violent places that was in the country for quite a while. That is basically what the Wild West really was, um, not necessarily Texas or Kansas or anything like that. So I uh, hope you enjoyed these lectures. I always find these to be fascinating subjects, and um, well, I'll talk to you next week.